Well, good morning and welcome to the banks of Meadow Farm Cottages, which is the chosen destination for this instalment of the Match Masterclass. And we're taking a closer look at probably the method that is gonna be the most devastating in the colder months, and that is dobbing bread. It just comes alive when the water gets really clear, the temperatures get cold, and the fish don't really want to eat anything, this method is probably reliable for a huge proportion of match winds up and down the country. So there's certain situations where it's more effective than others, which we'll get into throughout the session. But what I'm gonna do is concentrate on getting this fish in. It's been a good start, a fish on the first cast, and hopefully that means there's plenty more to come. So this one's nearly ready and we'll have a fish to show you straight away. There we go, that is exactly what we're after. This venue is full of little carp, ranging from perhaps two, one, two pound, all the way up to sort of four or five pound would be a nice one. Obviously there's a couple of bigger ones as well, but a day of catching sort of one or two pound is, is exactly what's on the cards, we hope. And like I said, certainly now when it's getting really cold although you wouldn't think it looking at the day we've, we've probably picked one of the warmest days in the last month but it's still pretty cold and the colder it gets the better dobbin bread becomes so we'll get this one slipped back in the net and then we'll talk to you a little bit more about the situations where it's most effective well let's hope for a few more of those and it'll be a good winter session but the first thing we need to talk about with this method is where it's most effective now in my personal experience, just fishing this in the middle of nowhere in open water isn't very productive. Basically, the whole idea of dobbing bread is you need to put the bait right in front of their face and where they are sitting. So the peg I'm on today is perfect for it. So we've got the staging here to my right. We can have a little go down there. I've got an inlet pipe, a big corner at the end of the lake, and then all the far bank as well. So loads of little areas where these fish are gonna sit in little pockets. The colder it gets, they're a bit like me, they're really lazy and they'll sit in groups and they won't really move very far. So your job as the angler is to first of all find out where they're sitting and pop this tiny little disc of bread right in front of them. And the better you can get that and the quicker you work it out, the more fish you're gonna catch. So first of all, I would start off in the most likely looking area in your peg, which for me is just this far bank. You know, I'm making noise over here. They're probably gonna be scooting over to the far side to get away from us. And then you'll find that they'll sit in little pockets like I said. So what I'm gonna do is ship out to the full 16 meters. Now it's really shallow over the far side. So I am about two foot off it, just as the water deepens up a bit. But I'm just lowering and swinging that disc of bread and perhaps every sort of minute or so I'll just move it and I'll work this whole far margin to try and find where these fish are. Now to give you a rough idea, so what I said you need to put it right in front of them, fish don't spend all of their time on the bottom, it's really important to remember that, especially as it gets colder. So I plumb up my swim and then I start off at about a float length off the bottom. Now that gives me a good indication. If I'm getting loads of liners or mist bites, stuff like that, it gives me an indication that those fish are perhaps higher in the water and I need to shallow up to see if I can catch them. But I'm gonna, like I said, about 30 to 45 seconds, maybe a minute in each little drop. And then I'll move it a couple of foot down the bank, repeat the same process and just let that bread this slowly sink. And you are literally trying to hang it in front of one. So. If this doesn't, anything doesn't happen in sort of five or 10 minutes, I'll have it in, I'll change depths, I'll move to somewhere different in my swim. And it's all about finding where those fish are sitting. But we've already had one, so I'm confident there's a little ball of fish out there in front of me. And it's now just a case of hopefully one of them is gonna have a little snatch of that disc of bread sitting in front of them. A 
there we go. That worked pretty well, I must say. It doesn't always go that well when you're filming, but we had a couple of lifts and drop and just straight back in the same hole is what we caught the first one. So I may have been a little bit lucky as in where I first dropped my rig for the first cast, we found a little ball of fish and they will certainly move throughout the day, but that's why it's quite important to keep yourself active. And that's why I said you need plenty of areas in your swim that those fish are gonna hold because they won't go far. They might only go two or three foot to the right or the left and you just need to keep in contact with them all day. But this one is putting up a pretty good account for itself. So I'm gonna stop talking, concentrate a little bit on getting this one in and hopefully in quick succession, that's a couple of fish to show you. That is exactly what we ordered. A touch bigger than the one we had a minute ago, but not a lot. And yeah, like I said, the average sort of size that we're trying to target. And it didn't take very long at all. It is, as I've mentioned, an absolute devastating method once you find out where they are and what depth they're sitting in. That's basically the only complicated thing about this method but what i'll do is i'll slip this one in the net and we'll have a little look about the rig and the punches and the bread and a little bit of stuff like that to make sure you're doing it as effective as you possibly can and there we go so hopefully now you've got a good understanding about how important it is to get it at the right depth in the right place i know i went over it perhaps two or three times but trust me if you get that right your day's fishing is going to be really good but while I'm out of the water, it's a perfect time to look at the rig. We'll start off at the elastic end and we've got orange slick, which is just balanced perfectly for the fish that are in here. So sort of two to five pound, we'll deal with those absolutely no problem. Then we come on to the main line. So the main line of the rig is Power Micron in 012. I do scale down a little bit because as I said, the clarity of the water is becoming really clear now. Anything you can do to get yourself extra bites by scaling down, it's gonna definitely help in this situation. So back to the rig, the first thing you may notice is the long length of line between the float and my elastic. It's probably two or three times longer than I would use in a fishing situation, but that's for two reasons. Firstly, because it lets me swing my rig away from the pole tip. So if there's any shadow being cast on my pole, the fish won't spook from it, because I'm fishing past the end of my pole tip. It lets me get in all of these areas that I talked to you about earlier. And secondly, it gives me enough line. So if I fish a deeper part of my swim, I can just slide my float up. One rig, rig does all, and there's no need to set loads of different multiple rigs up. So that gives me plenty of scope to move the float at all different depths. One thing I have added just in between this sort of start, this section of line, is two number eights. And that is purely because it keeps me in contact with the rig. So it makes me hit bites a little bit better and it saves the line blowing in all the wind. I just think it neatens it up. So it's a good little addition if you're not already doing that. The float itself is a wire stem in 0.3 gram. Wire keeps it nice and stable. And I do go for a relatively thick bristle, either a one mil, one and a half mil, just because bread takes on a bit of water, it becomes a little bit heavy, and it allows to see your bait on the bristle and gets those positive bites to make sure you're reading exactly if it's a liner or a bite. Now, shot in pattern, most of the weight goes underneath the float. I've got three number eights right underneath it, and then spaced out throughout my rig is some number 11s, and that just creates a nice, slow, natural fall of this disc, bread disc to make sure that you're grabbing the fish's attention. The more natural you can make it, it doesn't appear it's in a rig, the more bites you're gonna have. And this is actually the only rig now that I use, either cube weights or stots, whatever you wanna call them, because as you can see what I'm doing there, they slide on the line so easy and they don't damage it. Normal round shot, don't like being moved. So for this rig, and probably one of the only things that I do, I do use the little stots. Now hook link is a six inch hook link. And pretty much 
95, 100% of the time if you want. I use ready tied hook links. They're as good as you can tie them. No problem, they never let you down. I've got an MXC1, size 18, and again on 012. So it's not that complicated, it's just neat and does the job perfectly. And the last thing I do want to mention, as you may notice on my top kit, I've drawn on depth markers at inch intervals all the way through my top kit, and it really does help you get accurate with your fishing. So I'm fishing at 40 inches deep here at the moment. The swim itself is about 50, 55, so about 10 inches off bottom roughly, but it allows me to see exactly where I'm fishing. So if I wanted to move just one or two inches in depth, I can do it with this depth marker. And more importantly, I can then log and remember what depth I'm catching at. So if I was a regular here or I was fishing a winter league, I, you know, I could put a little note in my phone maybe and say last week I caught at 40 inches deep or 10 inches off the bottom. And you know, you're really, really accurate. So you can draw those on. I just drew it on with a permanent marker, but you can get dedicated top kit markers that people are doing now. But a permanent marker does the job and it gets it really accurate it might sound like it's a bit too much detail but trust me if you can get the depth right you'll catch more fish so i've just swung that rig out there now well past the pole tip the little shot are keeping me in contact there's not loads of line flapping around and hopefully we've already had a couple of fish so hopefully we can nail these fish down into a certain depth a certain area and put a little flurry together for the cameras Well, we have put together now a nice little steady run of fish. I've had to move around a little bit. I've caught a couple on the far side, but I've also caught a few in the corner. And this one has come from the corner and they really are good bites when they're, they're in that corner. For some reason, I don't know if they're a little bit more confident just being pushed away right in that edge. But I've played a little bit with depth. I've, I've gone a couple of inches deeper but in general, we're not too far away from exactly how we started. So I feel like we got a little bit lucky in the fact that potentially got the areas and the depths right really quick. And like I said, some things that would really give it away is miss bites would mean that you need to come shallower or getting no bites at all means you need to find another little area to poke it in or potentially go a little bit deeper. But yeah, steady run of fish, which is always what you want to do in this method, keep them ticking over and putting weight in your net. So this one's coming, coming out. They've still got a fair bit of energy to be fair for the, the winter months. You expect them to go a bit, a bit calmer, but not these, they're full of life. So we have another one to show you, a little mirror, this one. We've had all sorts really, mirrors, commons, a right little mixture, but most of them around this sort of size so i'm going to get this one slipped in the net he's like holding a little block of ice today and then we're going to take a little look at the bread the discs themselves the punches we use and just how exactly i hook it on to make sure it doesn't come off all the time all right there we go let's have a little look at the bait itself and more importantly the way that i punch it and how i put it together because basically for me the one thing i want to ensure is the fact that my bread stays on. But before we get on to that, I'll just talk to you about the punches that I use. Now, I use these for if I'm punching meat, punching bread, it doesn't matter. They're just compression punch from Matrix in four mil, eight mil, and 10 mil. If I was fishing for little F1s or something like that, I'd use the four mil. Flip side of that, fishing for big carp, the 10 mil. But to be honest, 
probably 85% of my time, I just use the eight mil. Now we get on to the bread itself. So to make sure your bread stays on really well and it gives an extra bit of toughness, basically I put two slices together, just lay them on top of each other and compress them together really hard with your knuckles. I don't know why, but when two slices go together, first of all, they sink every time. You don't want it to float. But yeah, as I said, they really are resilient to lifting and striking. And then all I'm doing is using my punch to punch both together. I pop that little disc out and then an extra squeeze to ensure all of the air is out. And the way you're hooking it on is literally the same as a bit of corn or a mag or anything. You're just hooking it through the side with plenty of hook points showing. And that really will stay on nice and tight. The one thing to remember, you probably see at the start there, is just pop your lid back on top of your bread to keep that nice and dry. You don't want it to dry out. So I just keep it in a bait box with another bait box on top of it. But I'm gonna go out there now and see if we can have another fish. I've had three or four fish quite quick from in that corner and to save spooking them completely and really sending them from somewhere else in the lake, I'm just gonna give them a little rest in that corner and go back out to the far side where we initially started. And we've had bites there, so I'm. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some fish about. But yeah, like I said, once that bread with two bits together, compressed really well, I'm more than confident of lifting and dropping, striking, and it's gonna stay on nice and well. So let's hope that there's another fish sitting down there who's willing to have a little nibble on our slices of bread. <laughs> that um, couldn't have worked much better could it it was in there for probably i don't know a few seconds it was in there before this one grabbed it and that is worth mentioning about the the swim rotation like i said don't go and absolutely hammer them out of one place because they will get used to it and they'll find that they'll drift off somewhere else like i did mention earlier they won't drift far they don't tend to anyway but if you repeatedly hammering them out of the same area can just make them stop eating. So a couple of swims and rotating is always a pretty good way of keeping bites coming. But another nice fish coming to us now, and it's proven to be a relatively good day. So I'm gonna get this one in. Hopefully it's not gonna to take too long. And then I've got another little tip that I'm gonna give you that I've experimented with a little bit over the few years and definitely on occasions get me an extra bite. There we go, a little common again this time. And it's crazy to think really that all of the fish we've caught today and we've not fed a single morsel of bait. And it's all about putting it right in front of them. This one is freezing cold, but I think it's a bit like a sales really. You know, if you didn't want a big meal or anything like that, but someone dangled a sweet in front of you, if you're like me, a bit greedy, you probably grab it as well. And that's what you're trying to achieve. That one mouthful, one enticing little disc of bread in the right place, and they do grab it. So another wicked looking common. I'm gonna get that one slipped in the net and I've got a couple more tiny tips to tell you. That if it's a little bit harder, a little bit more tricky, you can get yourselves some extra bites. Right, so the last points I want to talk to you about is a couple of things that over the years in my fishing I've put into this style and I've not seen it in many of the other videos out there. There probably is people doing it, but they're not telling you. And I don't mind giving anything away. I like people to catch fish. So I think we've proved that bread on its own is good enough to compete and catch loads of fish. But on scenarios when it's really hard and you want to be a little bit different, you can't be jazzing it up a little bit. So there's a couple of ways I do it. The natural color of white bread is great, but if you want to add a flavor, then the Hinder's Beetling is a real sweet liquid. You can just spray that over your hook bait. Doesn't change the color of it, but you've now got lots of smell and lots of attraction to your hook bait. But to go that extra step further, if you did want to change the color, and get a bit of attraction smell in there as well. The goo is mega for it. So this is pineapple. The bread will go like a yellowy green color. And this one here is a bright pink 
spicy squid one. I don't particularly think it matters about the flavours, but I do a fair bit of carp angling when it comes to zig rig fishing, stuff like that. And I generally think that colours makes a big difference. If you want your disc to be slightly different and really grab one's attention, if it's rock hard, adding a few colours and flavours can be quite good. And one final little tip, the eagle eye viewers may have seen, I have got some liquidised bread here as well. If it was really, really tricky, a couple of times, this has got me out of jail by putting it in a little sprinkle pot and just sprinkling a little bit over the top of where you're fishing, just a tiny little bit, just raining a few dust particles with a little tiny pot on the end of your pole and it just makes them just nibble at little morsels that are coming down and then your bread could be one of them. But today there's absolutely no need for that just because it's been so good. But I might jazz up the bread discs and see if it makes a difference. So the same as always, I'm gonna punch out the two bits together. I'll put that back over the top to ensure it doesn't dry out. Squeeze your disc together and we then have got our bread disc. Now, I'm not gonna change the color just because white's been good today, but a little bit of squirt of the beetle in. That now, I mean, I can literally smell that in the air. That's now gonna be really sweet. And when I drop that in, it's gonna have an extra little bit of attraction throughout the day. And that probably is my favorite, if I'm honest, the beetle in, because I do like the white. I like bread to be kind of how it is naturally, because I generally think it's just so good that way. As I've proved today, I think that, you know, they eat it just as it is, but those tips I've just given you, for me, over the last few years, if there's everybody doing it, and luckily I'm here on my own today, midweek, but if there was a lot of people here doing it, I think being slightly different, in the same with all of my fishing, I think you can get an extra bite or two. So that little boosted bread disc is out there now. Perhaps I'll have a fish away now for 20 minutes, half an hour. I'll put a couple of coloured discs on, mix it up a little bit, see if we can increase that catch rate, and then hopefully put another little steady run of fish together for the cameras. Well, sometimes you get to a stage where you wish you wouldn't have said anything. The, uh, the addition of liquids and colours has been a really big difference. And I know I said when, when I'm fishing away and when it's harder, I've had days where it's made a difference. But sometimes, you know, when I'm catching well, I don't even think about adding it, but it has been so noticeable that it's definitely worth trying and yeah i probably shouldn't have said anything <laughs> should i should let everyone else fish normal bread but in all seriousness pick yourself a flavor and a color that you like or like you said just the beetle in it doesn't even change the color i've caught on all of them and it has just increased the bite time but i'm probably going to call this one the last fish it's been a, a real good day enjoyable days fishing but it is getting pretty cold now as soon as that sun drops at all this time of year you really do notice it and it's not really affected the fishing but it's certainly affecting us sitting out here so we're gonna have one more coming to the net shortly one more to show you before we sign off and there we go a nice chunky little one to end on mirror this time but certainly been eating a little bit more than a few of the others. He's got a fair bit of weight to him. He's a real fat little fella, but a good way to end a really, really good session. So if it's not something that you're out in the winter trying, give it a go. It's nice and cheap. It doesn't cost a lot to experiment with. You don't need to feed loads of bait and the rewards 
can certainly be there. So put some of that stuff into practice. Drop us a comment if it's worked for you. And obviously don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe button. But I'm gonna get this one slipped back in the net, send these ones on their way, and we're gonna head off home. <laughs>